Okay, hello everyone. So, I'm just coming out of recording the Project Nobody May Cry video that I'm going to post uh, tomorrow slash, yeah, tomorrow. Uh, I wanted this video, um, to make this video um, much more sooner because I'm making this video uh, almost a, actually a day after the actual uh, stream was done. That's be and that's because even though this was done on a sensible, it started the stream started on a sensible time for me. A couple of things happened, and then I didn't. My sister did something with the mic, and I couldn't get the mic. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm I'm doing this video only now when I really wanted to do it like super early, as soon as as soon as the thing, as soon as I finished fin watching the thing. But yeah. uh... Also, I'll be honest, I almost skipped this, because I argued, well, I'm not an Xbox fan, and while I do have a subscription to Game Pass, uh, there's, I did it only because my sister wanted to play Hellblade, uh, Hellblade 2, and uh, there are, and all, virtually all the games that are on Game Pass right now are stuff that I either already played, or stuff that I don't care about, or just straight up hate. And the only game that I actually cared about in the slightest, that being Forza Motorsport, well, it's a it's a pile of trash. So, yeah. In fact, I'm probably going to unless my sister has to do something with Hellblade 2, which I don't think she's going to. I'm going to um, cancel out the um, the subscription that I have. And thank God, I actually uh, decided to actually stick around because it, holy holy shit! And I, I yeah, it's been one minute forty six seconds for my from what I'm seeing, so I can swear this was actually pretty cool. And yeah, so let's talk about it. And also the uh, fan, the um, the background noise you're definitely going to hear it's my fan. Turns out it's that time of the year again. But anyway, uh, we start off with Black Ops Six, and um, I'll be honest, uh, I was a little bit uh, on the edge about buying it because uh, of. Uh, of all the leaks that said that this game was going to be set during the war on terror after 9-11 that said that was going to be the bad guy and all that stuff and then the trailer and then uh, in the trailer i saw um george bush's dad george bush senior and 1991 and i went from uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to buy the game to i'm i'm going to buy the game 100 percent because i'll be real the Gulf War was a scenario that I would have wanted, that I would have liked the series to tackle, and I got my wish. Even though, I, even though I actually talked to a friend of mine a couple of years ago about it, and he said that would be a terrible idea because that'd make it like uber racist. But uh, yeah, uh, and I was going to mention the thing of the and actually speaking before before I say that, a lot of people are from the scene are super hyped for this, and I don't blame them. I, I, I myself, I'm hyped, so, yeah. And speaking of, uh, I was going to mention the thing of the 300 gigabytes, but turns out that's actually bullshit, and the 300 gigabytes is actually a, um, it is uh, the page talking about the size of the game. He's actually talking about Modern Warfare 2, 2022, Modern Warfare 3, 2023, and uh, Warzone, which... All three of them are pretty beefy games, uh, which would explain the 300 gigabyte uh, side, the, um, the 300 gigabytes. So the 300 gigabytes is not about Black Ops 4, uh, Black Ops 6, sorry. Because why would you know? Even a company as shit as Activision uh, do have their uh, their um, their limits. But anyway, uh, then we had Doom: The Dark Ages, which uh, honestly. I am pleasantly surprised because from all the leaks that I've read, all the rumors, I've, I've, uh, all the leaks that I read were saying that this game wasn't going to include guns at all, but it's going to include a shield and sword. Now, the shield is there and it looks pretty fun, but the guns, yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm, actually, but I'm honestly surprised that this thing actually has guns, so yeah, uh, uh, now this game is set between the uh, Doom 64 and uh, Doom 2016, in that period in which the, um, in, the in that in the period between Doom 64 and Doom 2016, and uh, uh, oh god, what I'm supposed to, okay, I completely forgot what I'm supposed to say. Uh, oh god, I completely lost it. But yeah, uh, 
I'm I'm definitely going to buy this game. And oh, actually, there we go. Actually, actually, I remember. I remember. But honestly, to me, it feels like the gameplay is going to be way, way less extreme than Doom Eternal was. Now, if I remember, Doom Eternal was basically a standardized speedrun strats. But honestly, with this game, with the Dark Ages, I feel like this is going to be a lot, uh, a much more grounded game. Maybe actually, I mean, not grounded in the term that this is basically going to be like the the, the the original Dooms were. But yeah, I'm definitely going to say this is going to be nowhere near the amount of craziness that we have with Doom Eternal. Then we have State of Decay 3, which apparently was one of the games that was revealed before the thing started by the developers themselves. And since it, it, this is a horror, I didn't care. Same thing for Dragon Age The Villaguard. In fact, the only game that I'm looking forward to from Bioware is uh, Mass Effect, the new Mass Effect game they're making. Although, I will say that judging by the art style alone, I feel like this is not the Dragon Age that Bioware is actually working on, but sort of a stopgap slash bridge game that Bioware happened to be working on just to keep the uh, the fans satiated before they actually get the real Dragon Age. Because, uh, yeah, it's just too weird that they just release a game that is that is cartoonish from the Dragon Age game that, that is cartoonish. So, yeah, I believe this is not the real the game they're working on. It is going to be like a stopgap. Then we have new content for Starfield and the Shard Space, which... Honestly, I have no idea if that's. Uh, I'm. I'm. What? I'm going to assume this is DLC, but I have no clue. Then we have Fallout 76, the Skyline Valley expansion, which, uh, I mean, I don't really care about Fallout 76 other than apparently now this game is good. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody remembers when uh, this game effectively killed uh, all the reputation Bethesda had, but uh, yeah. Then we have Clear Obscure Ep- Ep- Expedition 33, which uh, I guess it look I mean, it has the potential to be cool, but to me it feels one of those games where uh, it looks cool, but it's so freaking even something tells me that they messed up something that is actually going to make the whole experience uh, overall worse. But I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just me being a pessimist. And then we have South of Midnight, which... Okay, not gonna lie, while I didn't see the reactions, I would not be surprised if a lot of people were already turned off by the decision to make the... Um, by the art by the art decision of the game. Not so much the art style, but the, uh, the decision of... Uh, which, by the way, the art style is... which, by the way, the art style looks pretty... pretty, pretty freaking amazing. But the decision of actually making the animation, the, the animations look uh, look choppy. Now, of course, I uh, I'm good. Uh, of course, I know these are. I mean, you can tell that these were in, uh, intentional. However, the fact that they are super choppy during cutscenes, but then they are so much fluid during real gameplay because we did see real gameplay in this trailer. I don't know. It just feels um, if if you didn't know be- if you didn't know any better. You probably you probably thinking that they released a super incomplete uh, beta. Uh, uh, they showed off a very very incomplete beta, beta beta port beta part of the beta of the game that had been optimized yet. Because, yeah, in fact, I wrote in my notes, people are going to be so mad at for this because, uh, yeah. And then we have an expansion for World of Warcraft called The War Within, which yeah, whatever. And then we have Metal Gear Solid Delta, the MSG free remake. MGS free remake, sorry. And honestly, the first thing that I honestly, apart from the fact that this game looks to be 100% faithful to the original uh, to the original game, one thing that I noticed is that, uh, and apparently this is something they actually released, they actually said super early when the game wasn't was announced for, uh, first hand, that uh, they've used the same voice clips from the PS2 game, like they took. The PS2 voice clips and put it into his game, which, uh, considering what the fuck did they do with the Silent Free HD collection, with with, with the Silent Hill HD collection and uh, the fact that Silent Hill Free was only with the new dub because they lost the original tapes, this is actually surprisingly competent for Konami. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm actually. I'm actually. I mean, I'm, I don't care about Metal Gear. I'm Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid personally, 
But uh, yeah, uh, this was some. This was a surprise that I definitely wasn't expecting from Konami. Then we have uh, season fourteen of Sea of Thieves, which whatever. And then we have Fate Lock, The Siege of Dawn, which is a Souls-like. So, I mean, the game looked interesting, but as soon as they said Souls-like, my interest went from uh, maybe to f- straight up fuck no. So, yeah. Then we have Age of Mythology Retold, which I think it's going to be remake. Now, I'll be honest, I have zero idea what Age of Mythology is. or uh, I actually I barely heard of Age of Mythology, honestly. I heard more about Age of Empires. In fact, I honestly thought that this was Age of Empires, some sort of weird DLC for Age of Empires, but no, it's not. But, yeah. Uh, and also, I, also, I'd say I'd learn more about Age of, Age of Empires, but it's still, like, super, super, not even basic uh, knowledge. Like, uh, yeah, at least for Civilization, Civilization, when I was talking about Civilization 7 a couple, of, a couple of days ago, I at least knew about Nuclear Gandhi. But this one, I know Squat. So, yeah. There we have... A game that I'm pretty sure a lot of people uh, thought that it was cancelled, that being the per, the new Perfect Dark game. But honestly, nobody's going to care about the game because uh, look how Jonah Dark looks. Yeah, you can tell the Crystal Dynamics took DSG money. I mean, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, that we are back to that whole bullshit of. Uh, Eastern character design is superior to Western game to character designer because uh, they actually don't care about this whole thing of making the characters uh, uglier to to um oh fuck that's the word to appeal to a more general public and I'm pretty sure somebody's going to mention the fact that some female streamers actually praised Eve from Stellar Blade for being one super hot and two like a mega badass but. Uh, yeah, uh, in fact, I actually alluded to this much more later in the notes with Fable, but yeah, apparently there are the, the comparisons between her, uh, I think I think they compared, actually, they also did that's the comparison to the woman that was seen, and one of the women that was seen in the in the bar, uh, in the Dragon Age, the Velagar trailer, that the woman that was in the bar looked like Fiona from Shrek. As for, well, I don't remember. I actually, I actually liked some like super quick because it was pretty. I saw that meme; it was pretty bullshit. Anyway, I sort of like some pretty quick, but yeah, that one was 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 big compared to Fiona from Shrek, and I didn't see who who Jonna Dark was who Jonna Dark was compared to. But it, yeah, so yeah, we're back to that bullshit of uh, ESG money and that stuff. But anyway, then we have exp- another expansion for Diablo 4, Vessel of Hatred, which, yeah, forget it. And, speaking of the devil, Fable. And it turns out that the, protect- the character that was, uh, that was billed as the death of Western games uh, and was compared almost to no end to Eve uh, is the protagonist. And uh, apparently you can actually change her appearance, so... Yeah, I wonder if those critics critics are going to still matter when this game this game comes out. Then we have Fragpunk, which is a hero shooter, and that's something that number one I don't care, number two I don't think this is gonna last very long, so whatever. Then we went to Burrow, which yeah, there was another skip, and then we have Mixtape, which uh, the only uh, thing that I wrote in my notes is the YouTube copyright bot will have a field day because, yeah, this, because apparently, because uh, they also have, uh, because they have songs from several bands from the 80s, including the Smashing Pumpkins, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to expect them to make a copyright-free uh, alternative um, soundtrack, but, yeah, it's, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a minefield, it's copyright, it's gonna, this game is gonna be a copyright minefield. Then off to the second page, which is actually and for for this being a two-hour show, this was only uh, my notes are like only a page and a half. But then the next game that was shown was Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, which yeah, whatever. Then uh, Elder Scrolls, the new expansion for Elder Scrolls Online, and also the fact that to celebrate the 10th anniversary, you can play for a limited time all the DLC they released for the games for, for the game for free. Then we have uh, Life is Strange Apple Exposure. Give I give zero fucks about Life is Strange, so let's continue. And then the trailer for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which uh, honestly, 
Uh, apart from the fact that kudos for actually getting uh, the uh, the license to Harrison to Harrison Ford's likeness. Uh, honestly, I actually wasn't aw- actually I wasn't aware that this game was made by Machine Games, and I honestly find it sort of uh, funny that the two biggest IPs that center around killing the Nazis are made by Wolfenstein, and this game are made by German developers. So yeah. Then we have Mecha Break, which was already shown at the at SGF a couple of days ago. Then we have Wuchang Fallen Feathers, which, uh, yeah, it looks fine, but, um, I don't know. And then we have Avowed, aka Skyrim, but done actually good, which, uh, I made, I remember it was made by Obsidian, aka Fuck You Bethesda, but, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't care about this game anyway. Then we have Atom Fall, which is made by Rebellion, and, uh, uh, spo- spoilers, uh, the, the last couple of games, except uh, no, not actually, uh, no, actually, no, 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 never mind, never mind. Like the last three games, are actually, so really interesting. But anyway, Adam Fall was made by Rebellion, which is a company that honestly I haven't heard in quite a while. Honestly, I mean, I wonder what they were up to. I mean, I thought of that game set in North Korea with the character that was voiced by Mickey Rourke that swore like every two seconds, and then not even, and then, then not even. 12 year old kid, not 6 year old kids playing Call of Duty would be that would be that egregious but <laughs> yeah and then we have a trailer for Assassin's Creed Shadows uh, I'm pretty sure that game has already pissed off a lot of people by number 1 having a film protagonist number 2 having a black samurai that apparently is not supposed to be it's not supposed to be historical it's not historically accurate they went for yet another needless representation when then a historic a historical and historical actually said I don't know Something like this did exist in real life, and of course the fact that the writer is a, was a, the writer actually the no the, not the writer the the historical uh, the the the, the historical consultant they hired for the game is someone who wrote a book about sexuality in uh, uh, same sex sexuality in um, in sixteenth century Japan if I remember correctly, so. Yeah, pretty much. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, those are the three things that I've uh, that I've remember from uh, everybody talking up uh, talking about this game. But yeah, uh, my sister is definitely going to, going to try it out. But for me, yeah, it's it's a hard skip. And then we have a game that hasn't been well, been seen in a little while for obvious reasons. That being Stalker to Heart of Chernobyl. Now. Uh, I respect the decision of having the game uh, uh, in Ukrainian rather than in English with the English subtitles because, I mean, come on, this game is made in Ukraine, so why shouldn't you? I mean, why shouldn't you? Uh, the game is made by U- made in Ukraine, the game is set in Ukraine, and it's made by Ukrainians, so why wouldn't you? And also, I, I also I'm going to assume now that the game, now that I assume that now everything is fine with GSG Game World, because um, again, for obvious reasons, uh, it almost felt like the development was. I think actually development went to a screeching halt, also because of the fact that some of the developers were actively went act, act are actively were slash are actually fighting the Russians. But now, since now we have a trailer. I guess everything is fun for them, so yeah, good for everybody who decided to stick and play the game. Uh, of, co- of course, for, it's good for all the developers that decided to, st- decided to stick and make the game, and the developers that decided to actually take up arms and fight the Russians. So yeah, good for the, good for the, the company in general. I mean, just the fact that this game is alive is surprising on its own. Like before, before you can, because if you remember, Slocker Two was already was originally planned like many years ago. Then the company failed, and apparently they brought it back, and now they're making another they're making the game that was meant to be. There was, there was like, uh, actually I have no idea how much of the original Slocker Two is in this one, but I'm going to assume something at least was grandfathered in. And then we have for the final game of the of the stream because I didn't watch the Black Ops Six stream that came immediately after it, Gears of War E Day. Which, uh, okay, I'll be honest, I didn't play Gears of War a Gears of War game in my life. I know it's weird, even even though I did own an Xbox, but 
Yeah, I, honestly, actually, I did see game basically a gameplay of uh, a full playthrough of Gears of War 3, and uh, that was literally it. But uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, Gears of War 3. So yeah, I saw Dom die. Um, I mean, the game is I mean, the game is almost 15 years old at this point, so might as well. Say, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure either everybody played it or that that should have been pretty uh pretty well pretty well known by this point, but it's uh it's still pretty cool to see Dom and Marcus back, Marcus and Dom back, even though it's definitely gonna be even though we all know what is going to happen to them, I mean to both of them really, but still it's really nice to actually see them actually see them together for one more game. And yeah, actually, actually, I think that Emergence Day was like the only scenario that they never tackled on a uh, on a game level because the first three games were plus Judgment, were the, the Locust War that was already happening, and uh, Gears of War, the, uh, the, first, the Gears of War, the first one started off when the Locust War had already started, and the uh, if I remember correctly, almost shortly after the, the actually it was immediately actually. No, fuck. Uh, <laughs> when did I mean? I remember the the Hammer of Dawn strikes happened in the first game, but I don't remember if it actually happened at the very beginning. I mean, it's actually, it must have happened at the very beginning. So yeah, it happened right when the Hammer of Dawn strikes. I mean, the first three games happened as soon as the Hammer of Dawn strikes. Hammer of Dawn strikes happened, and then uh, the other four the other gears uh, happened after it with the new look, you know, the new war. But uh, and judgment, I think it was about about the fall of uh, Yacinto, I think it was, or, or at least another big a big cog uh, at least cog city. But yeah, and E Day, Emergence Day, which was the day the uh, Locust War actually began, uh, was something that they uh, they never tackled in game. So yeah, uh, that that was a pretty a pretty uh, it was a good choice for um, it was a pretty good choice to it was a pretty good scenario to choose. And with that. That was the Xbox Game Showcase, and as I said, I'm glad I actually decided to stick around and watch it because, for a company that is getting that lately got a lot of flack for good reason because they shut down Arcane and Tango uh, a couple of weeks ago, this was actually some pretty cool stuff. A lot of games were were big hitters. There was a uh, a lot of interesting a lot of interesting games. Big hitters that that are actually are actually hyping people up. So yeah, amazing enough, this was a pretty solid one, a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid stream. And also, I'm aware that I'm, as I'm recording this, the Ubisoft Forward is happening, has happened, but honestly, I straight up don't care about it. So yeah, whatever. So with that, see you next time. Your turn, Nintendo. <laughs>